From May 29 to June 2, the UNESCO headquarters in Paris will serve as the venue for the negotiations on plastic pollution. Paris will host approximately 1,000 delegates from 175 countries, along with scientists, civil society representatives, and industry stakeholders who are participating in the discussions to address the issue of plastic pollution on a global scale. In this video, we will start by providing a concise update from Paris, followed by a comprehensive discussion on an important topic, plastic pollution. Specifically, we will delve into the categorization of environmental hazards associated with plastic pollution, with a particular focus on microplastics. Our aim is to provide you with valuable insights and knowledge on this pressing issue. If you find our content engaging and would like to stay informed about our upcoming videos covering a range of geopolitical and environmental debates, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel and enable notifications by pressing the bell icon. We also invite you to explore our existing video library for more informative content. Thank you for your support, and we hope you enjoy watching our videos. The aim of Paris negotiations is to develop a legally binding international treaty by 2024 to combat plastic pollution and its detrimental effects on ecosystems, human health, and the climate. Each year, over 350 million tons of plastic waste are generated globally. The negotiations are being conducted under the United Nations banner and are still in their early stages. The goal is to achieve a significant multilateral agreement on the environment, comparable in importance to the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. In March 2022, a resolution was adopted, establishing the Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee INC, for this purpose. Paris is hosting the second of five negotiating sessions scheduled until the end of 2024, following a meeting in Punta del Este, Uruguay. According to Christophe Béchu, the French Environmental Transition Minister, this meeting is seen as a crucial step and a valuable opportunity for environmental diplomacy. The talks on a global plastics treaty have commenced in Paris with a key debate arising between countries advocating for limitations on plastic production and the petrochemical industry favoring recycling as the solution to plastic waste. Many countries are emphasizing the goal of circularity, which entails keeping already produced plastic items in circulation for as long as possible. Ahead of the talks, a coalition of 55 nations called for a robust treaty that includes restrictions on hazardous chemicals and bans on problematic plastics that are difficult to recycle and often end up in the environment. Rwanda's Environment Minister, Jean-Darc Mujawamaria, who co-chairs the High Ambition Coalition to End Plastic Pollution, stressed the responsibility to protect human health and the environment from harmful polymers and chemicals through the treaty. French President Emmanuel Macron emphasized the urgency of the issue, urging the production of a universally agreed-upon text by the end of 2024. The UN Environment Programme UNEP, hosting the talks, released a blueprint for reducing plastic waste by 80% by 2040, focusing on reuse, recycling, and transitioning plastic packaging to alternative materials. However, some environmental groups criticized the report for prioritizing waste management and argued for global controls on chemicals in plastics and significant reductions in plastic production. The petrochemical industry, through a group called Global Partners for Plastic Circularity, supports mechanical and chemical recycling as central to addressing the issue. UNEP Executive Director, Inga Anderson, defended the inclusion of recycling in the report, stating that redesigning packaging and reducing plastic usage were fundamental aspects. Public health concerns related to plastics production and waste were highlighted by numerous countries during the talks. The UNEP report identified over 13,000 chemicals associated with plastic production, with more than 3,000 considered hazardous. Greenpeace released a report suggesting that plastic recycling processes can release these chemicals into the environment, including benzene. While the United States is not a coalition member, a State Department official expressed shared ambitions but favored an approach where countries develop their own national action plans, similar to the Paris Climate Agreement. The U.S. plans to announce a grant in collaboration with UNEP to support developing countries in taking immediate action on plastic pollution.
we will discuss the categorization of environmental pollution caused by plastic, which can help us better understand its impact on different ecosystems. Here's a suggested breakdown for categorizing plastic pollution across various environmental domains. Soil pollution. Plastic pollution in soil can occur due to improper disposal of plastic waste or the use of plastic in agricultural practices. Plastics can degrade into microplastics, which can accumulate in soil and potentially affect soil fertility and the health of organisms living in the soil. Agricultural products. Plastic pollution can impact agricultural products when microplastics enter the food chain. Microplastics may be ingested by plants, which can then be consumed by animals or humans. This raises concerns about the potential transfer of plastic contaminants through the food we eat. Bird pollution. Plastic debris, particularly single-use plastics like bags or packaging materials, can pose risks to birds. Birds may mistake plastic for food or use it in nest building, leading to ingestion or entanglement, which can cause injury, suffocation, or death. Freshwater pollution. Plastic pollution in freshwater systems, such as rivers and lakes, can have detrimental effects. Plastics can accumulate in water bodies, affecting water quality, disrupting ecosystems, and posing risks to aquatic organisms. Marine water pollution. The most visible aspect of plastic pollution is often observed in marine environments. Plastic waste enters oceans and seas through various sources, resulting in pollution of marine waters. This pollution can harm marine life, affect habitats such as coral reefs, and contribute to the formation of garbage patches. Marine life pollution. Plastic pollution poses a severe threat to marine organisms. Marine animals can ingest or become entangled in plastic debris, leading to injury, suffocation, or starvation. Microplastics can also be ingested by smaller marine organisms, potentially entering the food chain and affecting larger species. There are other pollution or dangers specifically related to plastic pollution. Here are some additional aspects to consider. Microplastic contamination. Microplastics are tiny plastic particles measuring less than 5 mm. They can enter the environment through the decomposition of larger plastic objects, or as microbeads in personal care products, which we'll discuss more thoroughly later in this video. Chemical leaching. Certain types of plastics can leach toxic chemicals into the surrounding environment. This is especially concerning for plastics containing additives such as phthalates, bisphenol A, and flame retardants. These chemicals can be released when plastics degrade or come into contact with heat or liquids. They can have adverse effects on wildlife, ecosystems, and human health, potentially leading to endocrine disruption, developmental issues, and other health problems. Plastic persistence. Plastics are known for their long persistence in the environment. They can take hundreds of years to degrade fully, and even then, they break down into smaller fragments known as microplastics. This persistence leads to the accumulation of plastic waste in various ecosystems, including oceans, where it can persist for centuries, causing ongoing harm to marine life. Invasive species transport, plastic debris, particularly marine plastic, can act as a vector for transporting invasive species. Organisms can attach themselves to floating plastic pieces and be carried across long distances, potentially disrupting ecosystems and out-competing native species in new areas. Entanglement and physical harm. Wildlife, both on land and in water, can become entangled in plastic debris such as fishing nets, six-pack rings, and plastic bags. This can cause injuries, physical impairments, or even death for animals unable to free themselves from entanglement. Microplastic contamination has emerged as a significant concern in recent years due to its widespread presence in various ecosystems and potential impacts on both the environment and living organisms. Here's a closer look at microplastic contamination. 
What are microplastics? Microplastics are small plastic particles that are less than 5 mm in size. They can be broadly categorized into two types. Primary microplastics, these are intentionally produced small plastic particles, such as microbeads used in personal care products, for example, exfoliating scrubs, toothpaste, or plastic pellets, nurdles, used as raw materials in plastic manufacturing. Secondary microplastics, these are formed through the degradation and fragmentation of larger plastic items, such as bottles, bags, and packaging materials. Over time, exposure to sunlight, waves, and other environmental factors can break down plastics into smaller fragments. How do microplastics contaminate the environment? Microplastics can enter the environment through various pathways. Direct release, certain products, such as cosmetics and cleaning agents, contain microbeads that are directly released into wastewater systems and subsequently enter water bodies. Fragmentation Larger plastic items, such as bottles or packaging, break down over time due to weathering, erosion, and mechanical stress, resulting in the generation of microplastic particles. Atmospheric deposition. Microplastics can also be transported through the air and deposited in terrestrial and aquatic environments. This can occur through processes like atmospheric transport and fallout from urban areas or microplastics generated from tire wear on roads. Runoff and rivers. Rainwater runoff and rivers can transport microplastics from urban areas to freshwater bodies and eventually to the oceans. Microplastics can also be introduced to freshwater systems through industrial discharges or agricultural runoff. What are the environmental and health concerns? Microplastic contamination poses several environmental and health concerns. Wildlife impact. Microplastics are ingested by a wide range of organisms, including plankton, fish, birds, and marine mammals. They can cause physical harm, blockages in digestive tracts, and impair nutrient absorption. Microplastics may also transfer toxic chemicals absorbed from the surrounding environment into the organisms that consume them. Ecosystem disruption. Microplastics can disrupt ecosystems by affecting nutrient cycling, altering food webs, and potentially reducing biodiversity. Changes in population dynamics and interactions between species can have far-reaching ecological consequences. Contaminant transport. Microplastics can act as carriers for other toxic pollutants. Chemicals like polychlorinated biphenyls, PCBs, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs, and other persistent organic pollutants can adhere to microplastic surfaces. This can lead to the transfer of these contaminants to organisms upon ingestion. Human exposure. Although the full extent and health implications of human exposure to microplastics are still being studied, it is clear that microplastics have entered the human food chain through the consumption of seafood and other food products. The potential health risks associated with microplastic ingestion or inhalation are an area of ongoing research and concern. Addressing microplastic contamination requires a multifaceted approach, including reducing plastic use by reducing the production and consumption of single-use plastics and adopting sustainable alternatives. The overall input of plastic waste into the environment can be reduced. Improving waste management. Proper waste management practices, including recycling, waste segregation, and improved sewage treatment systems, can help prevent the release of microplastics into the environment. Raising awareness. Educating the public about the impact of microplastic contamination and promoting responsible consumer behavior, such as using eco-friendly. Daily you hear news like that. Top 10 plastic polluter companies worldwide or top 10 countries with the highest amount of plastic pollution in the oceans. Or the fact that China is responsible for 32% of the world's plastics production, taking its population into account. These statistics shed light on the significant contributions of certain companies, countries, and regions to the issue of plastic pollution. However, it is important to remember that addressing plastic pollution requires a collective effort and responsibility from individuals, communities, companies, and governments worldwide and we should not forget our individual responsibility. Individual actions play a crucial role in combating plastic pollution.
by taking steps such as reducing the use of single-use plastics, practicing recycling, and promoting responsible waste management, each person can make a difference. It is crucial for everyone to understand the impact of plastic pollution on the environment and take proactive measures to minimize their own plastic footprint. Through conscious choices and advocating for sustainable practices, we can all contribute to building a cleaner and healthier planet. Furthermore, it is vital to acknowledge the detrimental impact of plastic pollution on animals, including birds and marine life. As stewards of the planet we inhabit, we have a responsibility to protect not only our own environment, but also the well-being of other creatures that share it with us. Together, by working collectively and recognizing our individual responsibilities, we can strive towards a world with reduced plastic pollution and a more sustainable future for all.